Hi, my name is Mika Mazzini and I will read you a short story I wrote uh, titled Breaking My Bones. It was originally published in 2018. Me? Aggressive? For fuck's sake! Me? He nodded intensely as if uh, looking for the belly button on his paunch pressed against the glass table. I, suspect, I, sus I suspected there was something wrong with him ever since he informed employees that they could also use the lift reserved just for him. Then he stopped parking his Hummer across three parking space and, spaces and yesterday he arrived in a BMW 7 Series become, becoming only for someone in charge of a firm of pensioners. He looked at me with the eyes of a dying wretch from a silent film. What's wrong with you? I asked him. With one of us, he started, somewhat high-pitched, like a shriveled up slut. I seriously wondered whether he had been swapped by aliens, but what would they possibly want with him? What is it you want? I hissed, deliberately curling my upper lip as if smelling the fresh shit of someone who had stuffed themselves on pork the day before. We know each other since primary school. You were quite different then, and now... I moved my gaze to the large frame in the middle of the writing desk and the magazine cover in it. His wife was beauty queen at some pageant or other in her first year at university. Had she known that, that in 20 years' time her husband would much rather look at her as she was then than as she is now, she probably wouldn't be smiling quite so broadly. What is it you want? He scowled and looked over the ceiling, his Adam's apple trembling slightly. A strange explanation dawned on me. Have you found God? He shook his head. I too looked up and couldn't see anything but the grill of the air web. Are you searching for him? No. He stood up, walked across the open door, took a deep breath and went out onto the terrace. I followed him. I want you, he spoke in much louder voice that was necessary, to be the way you were at secondary school. Cool, as we call it at the time. He pushed his hand into the foliage of the cypresses, growing in huge flower pots that lined the railing around half the sixth floor. What are you on about? Tell me loud and clear, I joined him. The town hummed below, cars competing at how to most successfully pollute the air more before sending it up towards us. He spoke so quietly I could barely understand him and had to check I was hearing correctly. Doctor? What kind of a doctor? Shrink? He shook his head and his smoothly shaven neck rubbed against his collar. There was always something porcine about him. Perhaps it was that, that that attracted me. I only became vegetarian after a heart attack two years ago. Not strictly, mind you. After all, it was only a mild heart attack. He had some good ideas. Firstly, that Slovenia is a tiny country, a shitty little speck on the map. That is why there is no need to produce. Leave that to those who have plenty of workers, the Chinese, for example. All we will do is have fun, and we did. I responded with my own, my own excellent idea. Miserable thoughts can be sold stuff to buy other miserable thoughts. The slick and cool guys need to sell to the state. Then it was his turn. Warehouses, stock, packing, who needs all that? Let us sell numbers and promises. That was how we began to sell which companies. It was a bit like picking up old tin cans that had been thrown out into the ant heap. Not a speck of their contents left. All you need to do is blow away the remaining ants and sell off the space they occupy at the premium price. Doctor, I repeated. He started the foliage as if he, he was about to start grazing at it. 
on it. A Russian. I could only just hear about the noise. I felt like I was having an autologic examination. Can you turn towards me and tell me clearly and loudly? To my surprise, he obeyed, despite stalling his words like a caked ketchup. I wasn't feeling well. My wife recommended this doctor, but he's Russian. All the things they developed with astronauts in the Soviet Union, they have these devices. You hold two electrodes and the machine whistles, hums. Well, um, he discovered I was full of negativity. And then very soon, after only five senses, that it's not my own, but external. I was told to bring a personal item for each person in my immediate environment. Hang on, those staffs at the office, I had known him for 35 years and did not know he was capable of what I just now saw. He blushed. It's you, he said. It's, it took a few months for the doctor to find out. It's you. All this negativity, this aggression, it's you. What did you do? Stare at the bottle of vodka until my image appeared? He gave me an offended look. Don't take the piss. This is serious. I couldn't go on like that. He also looked out. Midlife crisis, I saw to myself. What do you want? I asked him. Or what is it your Russian guru wants? He gave me one of those hemorrhoid sufferer's looks. Listen, he said. You're the aggressive one. Yet it is me who goes to the meetings with all these losers and me who slowly shows them towards the edge until I eventually push them over. It should be you doing this. Oh, that's not what we agreed, I asked. Fuck off. Fuck off yourself. I own 51% of the company, he responded in the expected way, and instantly grimaced as if the words were bitter lemons. See, see, you are forcing me into insults and negativity. Well, what do you suggest? that you fire 51% of chemin tech stuff and I fire the remaining 49? He looked at me like father looking at a small child still innocent as to the secrets of the world. The Russians fucked up. If I had it my way, they would have left like our nurse and allowed someone else into the space. Are we ch changing the way we work? Will we stop buying up companies and finding stuff? I asked. Thinking hard about what I was getting at, the deep furrow in his brow made it look like a miniature arse crack. No, 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 not that. What would we make money of? I turned around and went to my own office on the far end of the floor, without a terrace and with a view of the neighboring building. Sometimes that percentage makes a big difference. difference. I, knew, I knew what would follow the son of a bitch would have a go at mobbing. The following morning, a kinder surprise in some sort of new age card with instructions on how to release your aggression awaited me at my desk. When I opened it, out fell a coupon for three courses in meditation. My partner had not yet lost it entirely. Clearly, he didn't dare give me access to his own guru. I kept receiving encouraging emails through the day, ones that instantly drew my index finger to the delete button. But then I started wondering whether he might have planted some important message in a midst the junk and I had to sift through all the shit he said. The deadline for solving the Chemintex problem was approaching and there was no evidence that the majority shareholder would react at all. Then came a day when his car was not in its usual place. The space outside the main entrance was empty. I stared at the yellow disabled parking sign, thinking at first that, they must have actually, that he must have actually fallen ill. But then I noticed his BMW. I stepped into the circle that represents the wheelchair, and it occurred to me that I have known my far partner for too long. That is why I'm unable to see him as he is now, 
but I see expectations with regard to the past. I felt a pressure descending over me and it took me a while to recognize fear. I was taking it all too lightly. The man was having a serious personality crisis. If he no longer parts on the closest space and prefers to walk, then he's capable of anything. I sent an email to his secretary and he re received me straight away. I hoped he wouldn't notice how slowly and clearly I was speaking to him as if he was retarded. Tell me what you want. It's for your own good. I want, we've been working together for years, but we don't know each other, not really. We don't socialize, which is fine. That's fine. We spent all day at work, more or less in the same space. Energy is transmitted, you know. Well, I like to feel better. We do, after all, spend more time here than with our families. I'm sorry, I know. I apologize, I didn't mean to offend you. I know that I asked. You have a guilty conscience. He wrote again and sought for a while. What for? Everything we do is about board. There was something different about his office, but they couldn't figure out what. Please, he said, work on it. You must get rid of the negative energy. The doctor determined that you are inadequately aware of yourself, that you are not in contact with yourself. Can I meet him? No, certainly not. You're not ready for that. Hmm. What do you pay him? What does that matter? Money is not important when you have it. Yeah, yeah, true. That's why you, you have to have it. Money is the me measure of freedom. I started at him. Listen, he continued. We are working together all these years. I want you to be the way you used to be. And what did I used to be like? He jumped back, still in his chair. Sorry, I said. Okay, what did I used to be like? He gave me a puzzled look. I don't know. Different. In what way? As usual, when embarrassed, he started poking in his ear with his finger. I don't know. This is as far as I get in my seances, the sort that you used to be different. Let's get together tomorrow. Perhaps I will know by then. Since my wife has become my ex, I converted the spare room into a space for practicing my electric guitar. I kept slamming a single riff until I could no longer feel the tips of my fingers and my thumb started bleeding. It made a mess of the keyboard as I placed an express delivery order for some drums. Perhaps I should speak to his wife, I suddenly saw. After work the following day, I drove out to the house in the suburbs and rang the doorbell without prior notice. I wanted my visit to have an air of business to it, so I arrived without flowers or a bottle, just condoms. Clearly, my partner had neglected to give his Russian doctor one of his wife's personal items, a dildo, perhaps. She talked and talked, jumping from one subject to another, hoping from one island peeping out of her deep despair to the next. I tried to follow her conversation for a while, but then I realized that what she was saying was not important. All that was needed was for me to nod occasionally. My schoolmate has always wanted and obtained a trophy wife, but made a mistake of not stuffing her and mounding her about the fireplace straight after the beauty pageant. Her body was fine, breast implants, buttocks faced, and muscles cultivated by personal trainer, but at the same time, it felt like I was pumping a dummy. She lay on the bed and arced her arses with pretending to be a bicycle parking rack. She lay back down when I came and then started crying. When I wanted to move away, she pressed up against me until I stopped. I watched the clock by the bed and wondered what we were going to do about this scamming text. I could fire them all myself, but if I don't stop my partner madness at this early stage, God knows where it could all end. I started calling in on her every day after work. Considering the ratio of sex to crying, I had the feeling I was ringing her out rather than fucking her. My partner needed a whole week before awaiting me with a triumphant smile. I remember during yesterday's seance, 
I was always the way I am now, but you used to be different. Well, well, okay. You told me that. Well, in what way? Do you remember the bird? No? He was so satisfied with himself that he almost clapped. Ha! Do you remember the trip to that mountain when we were in primary school? What trip? When we found the bird. I shook my head. It had fallen out of its nest. We wanted to smash it with a stone, but you stopped us. You picked it up and carried it all the way back down to the valley. Everybody took the piece out of you. Something started thinking in my memory and he made every effort to try and help me remember. You fed it. It was in the days before the internet, so you went to the library to find out what you were supposed to feed it. I came around every day and saw how you looked after it. Don't you remember how you tried to teach it to fly? I grumbled something vaguely at him. You put a dictionary on the table and placed the bird on the edge, pushing it over. Remember how it started fluttering its wings? Yes. Well, then, then you began pushing it off the edge of the table and finally we took it up to the terrace on, of out of our block of flats. During yesterday's sense, I held those electrodes and couldn't believe how vividly that morning has stayed in my memory. Damn, Dawn, everything was quiet. You, you with that black bird in your hands, remember? Yes. And then you said, but it can't just live like this. Let's give it a proper send off. Let's sing it to it. And you started singing that beetle song you birth can sink or something like that, but you couldn't remember the words, so you sang Let It Be instead. What a morning that was. I remembered everything. You got that wrong. Oh no, don't deny your own kindness. Okay, so what, I said. We went to the railings, you stretch out your hand and let go of the bird. What a morning. It dropped like a stone, I snapped at him. He grimaced with offense. Don't be so petty. See how your negativity and aggression immediately surface. I couldn't take my eyes off his hands that had started shaking. Have I heard correctly? Did he really pronounce his as negativity or aggression? Was he about to have rolls of Russian subtitles come spurring out of his mouth? He started at me as if he was about to start throwing up coins. And what now? I was becoming impatient. Now all is clear. This is a case of in parallel world, I'm here, just as I am now, but you are not. You are out there being charitable, helping others. You are a good Samaritan. This is my fault and I feel bad. Guilty for having lured you into the business instead of charity. You could be in India with Mother Teresa. She's dead. There, see, see that? The doctor said that's typical, getting bogged down in details, not allowing the truth to liberate you. And because you are not living your life, you are infecting all the rest of us with aggression and negativity. I caught myself sighing as if sitting on a torture chair. We start, start at each other and he smiled at me encouragingly. What about chemin texts? I asked. They are all to be fired. Oh. I just love your use of the infinitive. When are you going to fire them? He put on the stricken father look again. It can't be me, really not. I put a great deal of effort into achieving a higher level. At that moment, I realized what was different in the office and I shuddered with horror. He had removed the portrait of Steve Jobs from his desk. Please, you go and sag them, he said. You need to come to therapy with your aggression. I had to bite my tongue not to start swearing at him. Look, I began, I have a suggestion. Let's appoint a director who will know, he protested sharply. This is between me and you. As the doctor said, we were young men when we started and our bones have ossified in a strange way. Now we need to break and align them into the correct position. Okay, how many percent of the company are you prepared to give me? He opened his mouth in surprise. I can't do that, then I wouldn't be the boss. It wouldn't be fair, I put too much money into starting this up. Five weeks worth of summer's pay with me only able to work the fourth. 
whatever. It's for your own good, he added. Okay, will you buy my 49%? You know, I don't have that amount of money. And what do you want? He rolled his eyes apart the slow witnesses of my brain. There were time faster and faster until I discovered I was only interested in the transitions. One transition after another, faster and faster until every strain of hair was its has its droplet of sweat and the t-shirt slaps against the friends and body, drumming, drumming, drumming. Amid the tears, she said, if only I had a child, it would all be different. Please go and fire them, it will do you good. The doctor says that you can close your eyes at the summit of your activation and withdraw into yourself, get in touch with yourself. You will see yourself from the outside as your own double. Watch it. He called it doppelganger because your true self will observe you false selves. You will be liberated. You will open your eyes and be calm. You will be a different person. You will be your true self, pure. Perhaps you will even get your family back or start a new one. Please. How could the E string snap? It's the sickest of them all, for fuck's sake. I started plucking the remaining five and eventually slammed the guitar against the wall. I pierced the drum head on the bass drum. I yelled at the guy on the online sales help line and I didn't stop even when I realized he said he had long conga. Investors kept asking what was happening with Skepta. I forwarded their mails to my partner and in the end also diverted my phone to his number. I yelled on the secretary who had forgotten to remind me of a meeting. I pressed my face against the symbol and allowed the sweat to run across the metal. My partner filled my diary with regular daily meetings at nine in the morning, a preaching breakfast on the terrace. When we were having sex, his wife turned around and looked at me without blinking. To my relief, she still rolled over into her belly for the crying. She said I was the only person who understood her. Perhaps I too should find some important quack and discover what has happened with all these people. Why are they doing this to me, slandering me, imposing their own perceptions? With everyone picking on me, how else should I be but aggressive? He requested an additional meeting at noon. I had just returned from a visit to his wife. This time she sighed that she wanted to marry me and I admired my own cock for staying hard dry to the end despite such a declaration. My partner watched the traffic down below and stroked the cypresses. He looked like Jesus whose ships have been stolen. I will uncompile you, he said, wiping his finger in the handkerchiefs. I will go as far as the podium steps with you, stand by your side, because I love you. I realized this during yesterday's seance. What do they put in those electrons? He dismissively waved his hands. This sarcasm and rejection of yours is only the surface because you are afraid of the gentleness that will emanate from you when you rid yourself of aggression. When you are once more your true self, as you were when you were teaching the fledgling to fly, come, let me give you a hug. He opened his arms. I closed my eyes. Contemplating the reddish firmament sprinkled with shooting stars, I started singing Let It Be with the Holy Mother telling me to let it be, just let it happen, let it be. When I opened my eyes, there was nobody there to applaud the equanimity I felt.